Well, it's that time of week again for a few minutes. We call Coffee with PC. I got my new pastor mug here from Billy and John enjoying a cup of coffee. I actually went home and did a double shot of espresso in my Nespresso machine and a little foamed milk in there. So kind of a, I don't know what you call it, a latte or I don't know. I'll call it that, but it's pretty good. Nice, strong shot to pick me up this this day as we uh, are at, on Wednesday, on hump day, uh, halfway through the week as we move toward the week. A little over a week until Christmas and all of the the busyness of the season and all of the things that typically go on, I'm sure, like for us, for you, are ramping up a little bit. Um, just wanted to spend a few minutes today with you talking and kind of focusing our thoughts uh, away from that if we can, but on it at the same time, if that makes sense. You know, we do live in a media-saturated culture, uh, particularly, uh, I think, one of the things that's unique in this day and age is how prevalent and how accessible news is. Think about the fact that anywhere you are, whenever you want, you can find news. I mean, certainly, we've got 24-hour-a-day news channels, uh, cable channels of all sorts and kinds, all across the spectrum, from more liberal to more conservative. You can pick the bias that suits you <laughs> anywhere in there. Um, you have a, a device like this in your hand that, that uh, you can pick up, and if yours is like mine, it'll, if there's anything of, of note, it'll give me headlines that come up, uh, something significant that happens, uh, or my social media feed, anything on there that that is noteworthy i'll get a notification about uh, as, as far as you know national news or i can just open a, a browser or open the news app and see what's going on and, and certainly there's been a lot news worthy this year maybe uh more so than in in many ways this year overwhelming us with things on the news uh whether it be all that's gone on around the pandemic certainly more recently the election and just yesterday or just a couple days ago the electoral college vote all that that has been front and center on the news you know we, we are inundated with information we are inundated with news with with these sources and these opportunities to learn what's happening in the world around us and i think it stands in huge contrast when we we read the simplicity of the biblical account of the birth of jesus um, the word news shows up actually several times, but but I, I think about think about the difference in how news traveled then versus now, how people got their news. I mean, there are some pretty significant events. One of the things that that happens early on in the Christmas story is the news that's given about the birth of this child, the news that's given to Mary that she will miraculously conceive and give birth to a son, and and then the news that has to be broken to her family and to her fiance uh, at that point about the pregnancy and the, the news that Joseph gets when he's informed that he shouldn't end the relationship as he was trying to do quietly, but he should take Mary as his wife. And then the, the news that comes along that there's going to be a, a census, that all the world must be taxed and each one must go to their own, the town of their birth and, and the news that came that way and began to spread through all the land. You know, today, if that was the case, we'd probably get an alert. All our phones in church, like an Amber Alert a few weeks ago at the end of church went off and all the phones are, are beeping like crazy. But but back then, you know, town criers or whatnot would, would ride, uh, emissaries of Rome would travel to the different villages, try to gather as many people to announce that it spread a lot slower but the, the word got out and Joseph and Mary went and and did what they were supposed to do and and went to the town of Bethlehem like they were required and and there her days were accomplished that the time of the birth of the baby came and and then the news was given to some shepherds uh, in the fields nearby watching their flock by night the angels came and delivered this good news of great joy which shall be to all people and and then they come and they get to see the, the baby. And then it says uh, in Luke chapter uh, 2, verse 17, it says, when they had seen him, they spread the word, or let's say spread the news concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. There's more news that traveled. All of this uh, news as it in those different ways, certainly the angels played a part at times, but the person-to-person -person news, it, it was a much slower process. It was a much more deliberate 
process and, and even the the news that comes that that the magi the wise men are coming there they're I guess beacon was was a star that they saw in the east. You probably have heard, maybe you haven't, but I guess next week, the 21st, they're calling it the Christmas star. I think it's Jupiter and Saturn are, are gonna, as they're not gonna actually be close to each other. They're gonna be millions of miles apart or however far apart they are, but, but they're gonna be in their orbit and from our view from Earth, seem to be to the naked eye a single point in, in the low in the sky. And so they're calling it since it's in December, the Christmas star. And, and you can picture maybe that. I don't, I don't know that it'll be uh, all that. It might be kind of difficult to see depending on where you are, as I said, low in the horizon. And, and you know, these aren't going to be blinding lights because these two planets that are so far away from us kind of line up in their orbits. But nonetheless, people are making a lot about it and it's made, hey, here we go, the news. I've seen it. You've probably seen it. And I'm sure we'll see more into the first of next week you know all of this stuff all of this news just goes and and it, it is amazing to me to think about the simplicity of the era the simplicity of the time that mary and joseph lived in and and the reality that that this good news of great joy as the angel said which will be for all people happened at a point in history where to get that news beyond just a very small area took a lot of time and a lot of effort but the news was so significant right that here we are 2,000 years later still talking about it we have a record it was so significant that that it was recorded in what we call the Bible that that several authors around that time eyewitnesses to the life and ministry of Jesus wrote down their recollections wrote down their record Luke in fact says at the beginning of his account of the life of Jesus that he wanted to do what he did on purpose he says i myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning and decided to write an orderly account for you so that you may know the certainty of the things that have been taught he wanted to share the news of the life the birth the life the death and the resurrection of jesus you know it, it, it's a remarkable thing that that we have this record that it has survived all this time and that for many of us yes i understand the news over these next seven eight nine days however many days it is now till christmas will be all about that will be all about the different things that go around you know the last minute shopping push and 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 you know the the ads that bombard us and and whatever else the the christmas stars we talked about a few minutes ago but but this news that informs for for me as a follower of jesus Kind of is the underpinning of this Christmas season. Yes, there will be gifts, there will be family gathered, there will be a wonderful meal that we'll enjoy together. But but undergirding all of that is this simple news that a baby has been born 2,000 years ago, halfway around the world in the little town of Bethlehem, Jesus was born. And he, he might have come into a very different world and it might have been announced in very different ways than, than babies are announced. I mean, what do we do today? We have, when you get the, the, the announcement of the pregnancy, you get the, what do they call it, the gender reveal, all the different things that people come up with for that. And then, then you get the birth announcement. And then, you know, we, this is nothing like, like Jesus. In fact, it was probably they wanted to keep it pretty quiet. If you're Mary, if you're Joseph, if you're the parents, you know, this is a, a bit of an embarrassment considering the time. And yet, that news, that simple message of Jesus' birth has spread throughout history, has been preserved for us by the account of several authors that make up the books that were put together, these, some of these historical documents that we call the Bible that were put together so we can have a record of this news. And, and I guess in our modern way of doing things with, with all the cacophony of noise and news that we're bombarded with, you know, sometimes it's hard to, to separate what's, what's worth your attention and what's not. You know, how do you, how, it's just everywhere you look and you can feel overwhelming. And that, maybe that's why sometimes we just kind of turn it all off, whether we take a social media break or, or don't or tur tur quit watching the, the television or listening to the radio or whatever it is, the place we get our news or maybe decide to, to only use our phone for phone calls. Imagine that. Could you imagine if we only use these for phone calls? Well, that's another that's another devotion, another coffee with PC for another another week. But nonetheless, we, we're so um, overwhelmed by it. And yet here we have this simple news that these simple men, these shepherds, 
that had none of the modern tools that we have, none of the technology that we have, that were sitting out in the fields watching over their flock by night because that was their job. That's what they had to do. They didn't have all of the modern convenience. They couldn't set up like a, a, a webcam and they could sleep safe in their their houses while the webcam showed them if there were any predators out there, the motion detector for wolves. They didn't have any of that. They had to be out in the fields. And out in there, they get this amazing news that changes their life. And then what did they do? I, I read it before, but I'll read it again. They spread the word. They spread the news concerning what had been told them. You know, one of our goals at Christmas time and certainly all year round as, as our church is to spread the news concerning this child that Jesus, born in Bethlehem, lived his 33 or so years of life in Israel, crucified around the Passover celebration in Jerusalem, rose again on the third day. We, we just want to share that same news, the same news these shepherds did. And you know what I found, interestingly enough, the most effective way to share this news? I mean, we're doing it right now by technology, by by social media, through the internet. But But I found in my life the most effective way to share this news is the same way they did, person to person, one on one, face to face. I hope during this Christmas season with all that is kind of coming at us, all that's overwhelming and bombarding us, you'll take the time, not just by a post on social media or by a, an email to, blast email to your friends, but one on one, face to face, to tell somebody the news about this child. You'll follow the example of the shepherd and let that good news bring great joy for all people when they place their faith in Him. We're going to keep doing that on Sunday when we gather for worship. This Sunday, uh, as usual, we have our registration link in the notes for this video if you plan to join us in person. And of course, we'll use technology and we'll have it on the internet. We'll stream our service as well Sunday at 9. Hope you can join us one of those two ways and worship with us on this fourth Sunday of Advent, just a few days before Christmas Day. So until then, hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday.